greatly to be praised. God is great all the time and all the time. God is great. And we welcome you all to our service on this wonderful, blessed, little warm, but still blessed Mother's Day. Shout out to all the mothers, amen, in whatever shape or form you are, amen. I'm a mother via marriage, via family, amen. Praise God. And uh, I know for years I used to, I don't want to say downplay my role, but uh, being a mother is a very important role. And shout out to my mother. I have an awesome mother, awesome grandmothers. So I was very blessed, awesome aunts. Um, it's no small, no easy task, amen. So who am I see my my daughter shaking her head, but God is good. It's a blessing to uh, have a mother, to have your mother around, amen, for sure, happy Mother's Day, and even if you don't, you know, praise God, hopefully she was a good mother, and you have some fond memories, amen, of your mother. I was thinking about my mother-in-law, Mother Castle, she would sing frequently, Is It God Good, amen, that was one of her, amongst her favorite songs, and yes, he is, mom. Gives us so many blessings undeserved. Amen. God is good. He's worthy of all the praise. We welcome you all to our service. And before we go to the Lord, before the Lord in prayer, um, are there any open prayer requests? I know those of you that are tuning in via social media, I believe you can make your requests known via somewhere on the internet. Amen. Um, there's a spot for you to uh, make mention of your prayer request. And I can see Sister April. Yes, you have open prayer requests. Yes, uh, our cousin, cousin Sylvia has asked for prayer. Um, unfortunately, the cancer has returned in mm -hmm. another part of her body and she's asking for us all to just keep her in prayer that God will have his way. Cousin Sylvia, she's still in the Pacific Northwest or Seattle, Washington area? Yeah. Okay. We'll be praying for Cousin Sylvia. Pray for the service on today. We want the Lord's will to be done. Every aspect of the service from the opening. Uh, to the grace of worship, amen, to the spoken word on this awesome Mother's Day. I know I'm looking forward to a word, Lord. I need it, amen. 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 Any other open prayer requests? Pray for um, our bishop, as always, that the Lord continue to do a great work in his life and that he brings forth an awesome word that he always does. Pray for the St. John C. Amen. Those that, again, are mentioned um, in our prayer list, amen. We've got a number of them. Praise God. I won't mention all their names, but just keep the saints lifted in your prayers. Amen. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, again, this is the day that you have made, Lord Jesus. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are grateful to come collectively just one more time, Lord Jesus. One more opportunity that we have to raise our hands, all of you to clap our hands, to give you the praise, amen, to come again collectively. I don't take it lightly, Lord Jesus. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, but I'm standing here in the land of God. Really? Hallelujah. I don't take that for granted. I'm grateful to be here in the house of the Lord, Lord Jesus. And I'm grateful to have a mind to want to come and worship the Lord on this glorious day. We thank God for the mothers again who's mentioned. It's a blessing to have a mother. It's even a bigger blessing to have a good mother at that. So we're grateful for all the mothers out there and Lord, continue to bless the mothers. Meet their needs, Lord God. Just abundantly. Don't just meet the needs. Bless them abundantly, Lord God. You know, you said your word to exceedingly abundantly more than what we imagine or think, Lord God. And we're going to hold you to it. Just continue to pour out a blessing on the saints at large, those that are with us here in your vision. Bless us. Bless those that are tuning in. You know what their respective needs are, Lord God. And you know how to meet them at the point of need. And you know how to deliver. You know all about all of our situations, Lord God, you are the master of this universe. We cast our cares on you. We pray for those that are traveling, Lord God, that may be traveling to various places. Bless them to uh, survive wherever they're going to their destination safely and bless them to return, Lord God. Pray for Bishop and myself as we will travel with, to meet up with other family members this week, God. We just we need your grace, your mercy, Lord Jesus, and your continued blessings to watch over us. We are looking for a great time in the Lord today. About another opportunity. Hallelujah! Another opportunity saints, to come before the Lord on this, as most Christians call this first day of the week, Lord Jesus. And I don't want to take it lightly. I don't want anything else or rock or anything else to cry out in praise for me. I want to be able to praise you, say hallelujah myself, Lord God. I am grateful on today. And we just know that you've got just more blessings for those that are yoked up with your new vision and that are in fellowship with this continue. To bless, Lord God, send willing workers. We're grateful for the ones that we have, and Lord, you know how to reach and send workers, Lord.
Lord God, to do your will and to be a, a blessing and to be in partnership with us. God, continue bless the bishop's body from the crown of his head and so to his feet, Lord God. Meet him at this point of need, Lord Jesus. You know all about the situations that we're grateful for. We're grateful for your grace, your mercy. Thank you, Lord God. Your mercy is beyond the body. I'm grateful for the Lord's mercy that we do daily because I need it, Lord God. And we are looking for our time with the Lord and we're just looking for your word, Lord God. Let the word meditate on our hearts. Let it sink in, Lord God. Let us to not just be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word and move forever in your praise and glory. Continue to pray for us in this vision as Sylvia do the work in her body. You've done it before. You can do it again. Divinely heal her. Cancer's no match for you, Lord God. You're about every issue, the God of the issues, and nothing catches you off guard, Lord God. So you can do more. You can do it, Lord Jesus. You can bless her through the treatments, through the doctors. You can just outline and heal for your glory. And we'll forever be grateful for all the things that you've done, Lord Jesus. And we are looking forward to the awesome things that you will continue to do in our lives. And just continue to bless us, Lord God, again, to be not just hearers, but doers of your word. Amen. Amen. Our word of service will be as follows. We will have grace and worship by our NBC of Grace team. We will have Christian's Corner by Sister April Turner. And then we will have the Red Line by our very own Bishop George. Put your hands together for the Lord.
on social media, and you'll find it posted on our Facebook page, New Vision Christian Fellowship. You'll know you're on the right page when you see the profile picture of our pastor, Bishop George Reed II. Today's topic is, As a Kid Gathers Her Chicks. A forest fire burnt down a farmhouse in Western Canada. As the ignorance cooled, the devastated farmer walked over the ruins and noticed a burned lump on the ground. He plotted it with his stick and saw that it was a hen burned to death. The farmer turned the hen over, and to his surprise, out came three chirping baby chicks. The hen had died in the blaze as it saved the lives of her helpless brood. A real mother acts in a like manner when the lives of her children are in danger. We are so blessed to know mothers here that have chosen to stand in harm's way to see that her children grow up to be good Christians and productive citizens of our community. Today, we honor these great women of God and thank them for their commitment to Christ and their families. Your acts of love do not go unnoticed. Thank you for the sacrifices of missed meals, extra car rides, early risings, and late bedtimes, and in some cases, being both mother and father. As children, let's not be ungrateful to our mothers and take advantage of them. You have the one mother. As strange as it may seem, your length of life is directly connected <laughs> to how you honor your mother and father. In Exodus 20 and 12, it records, Honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, cool life in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. And finally, as the hen and the above story, Jesus compared himself to a hen that is committed to the safety of her chicks. Matthew 23, 37. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Let us not fail to come under the protect wings of Christ, but rather give God honor for his steadfast love and the wonderful gift of family he has given to you. Happy Mother's Day to all God. Those who 
are watching, amen, by social media today. We greet you in Jesus' name, and we say to all of the mothers, God bless you, amen, may heaven smile upon you. Today, Mother's Day, we'd like to invite your attention to the book of 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter number 21, 2 Samuel chapter 21, we're going to begin our reading at verse number 8 through 10, when you have that, I want you to stand to your feet as we give honor to the word of God, his word is already blessed, amen, we need to ask God, to transform the word from just the word to action. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Second Samuel chapter number 21. I'm going to read verses 8, 9, and 10, and we're going to be reading that from the revised standard version. I trust you will pray with us today as we deliver these few comments that God has given us. The king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Ayah, who she bore to Saul, Armani, Armani rather, and Phebusheth, and the five sons of Merab, the daughter of Saul, whom she bore uh, to Aureli, the son of Marzilia, the Beholdite. And he gave them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them from the mountain before the Lord. And the seven of them perished together. They were put to death in the first days of the harvest, at the beginning of the barley harvest. Then Rizpah, the daughter of Ayah, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock. From the beginning of the harvest until rain fell upon them from the heavens. And she did not allow the birds of the air to come upon them by day, or the beast of the field by night. May the Lord continue to bless us in this lesson today. You may be seated. is a time when we honor and celebrate women who have played such important roles in our lives. It's not an exaggeration to say that none of us would be here today if it were not for our mothers. Amen. Amen. Exodus 20 and 12 says, honor your mother, your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God gives you. This is the first commandment with promise. Your length of days, your length of life, your time in the day, your quality of life, your health, your prosperity, is connected to how we honor our father and our mother. Our text today starts with King David, not Rizpah. King Saul is dead, and David has begun to reign on the throne. Notice there is three years of famine in the land of Israel. And David sought the Lord as to why. God said to David, it's because of the bloody hands of King Saul, who has killed the Gibeonites. You may recall that it is the Gibeonites that had entered into a covenant, amen, with Israel, and 
the comfort was to spare their lives. But King Saul broke that covenant. Notice when God's people make a promise or a covenant, we are expected to keep it because promises are sacred to God. The psalmist said, swear to your own hurt and change not. And because of this covenant, God promised the Gibeonites that they would be spared. But instead, they were put to death by King Saul. So now, because of this breach in this covenant, David asked the Gibeonites how the Israelites could make atonement for this broken agreement. Yet the Gibeonites said, uh, we don't want any of your money. We don't want anything that was taken from the house of Saul. Then David said, okay, then I will do whatever you ask. So they came back and asked for the lives of the seven sons of Saul. These were not the actual sons of Saul, but these were the grandsons of Saul. These were the remaining heirs of Saul's household. Not all the sons were born to the same one. Five sons were born to Mirab, and uh, two sons to the mother we are honoring today, Rizma. These seven sons did nothing wrong. They had heard no one. Nothing to warrant such an action. They were judged by association, by being related to King Saul. The seven sons were taken and executed openly in the mount of the Lord so that all could see what happens to truth breakers. So here they are. Publicly shamed for the people, hanging there on a gibbet or a cross, their remains were exposed to the elements and to predators. As their flesh began to decay, it drew the attention of predators of the sky and predators in the field. Verse number 10, amen. This little verse uh, tells us of the greatest stories of devotion you've ever heard before. Verse number 10 says, And Rizpa, Aya's daughter took sackcloth and spread it out for her on the rock from the beginning of harvest, that's in the springtime, until the autumn rains pour down from heaven on the bodies. She kept the birds of the air from them by day and the wild animals by night. Sometimes we read through things and I'm not sure that we really get the impact of what is being said here. From May, we're in the month of May, Till the end of August, uh, the end of September, or the beginning of October, she did not allow the vultures to come by day nor the beast by night to touch those dead boys. Vultures. We all know what vultures are, amen? Amen. Thank you. Uh, Zaya for, for that amen. <laughs> Vultures are large birds, birds rather, that do not hunt for food. Mm -hmm. Instead, they feed on the remains of dead animals. They soar high in the sky searching for food. 
They use their, their excellent vision to scan over a large area of ground. Once they have spotted a dead animal or one that is about to die, they swoop down to pick off the flesh. Some of them find food by following the smell of decaying bodies. Other, excuse me, other vultures come as well and will eat up the meat of a whole animal very quickly. Then you recall David. David talking about some of the beasts of the night. In David's writings, David says that, that he came across a bear that had come to eat of a man, uh, the sheep. And he took care of, of a, a bear. So we can understand then that there may have been other things in the night that would come to eat up the bodies of those boys. Here is the picture. These men were put to death at the beginning of the barley harvest. And this mother did not leave their remains until the rain came. It's a long time between May and September, amen? But she was determined that nothing was going to defile the bodies of her son. Rizpa would go from one cross to the next, then the next, providing continuous protection over the boys. Remember, Rizpa had two sons, but yet she protected all seven of them. So she was actively, amen, going from one to the other and making sure that anything would not come to defile their bodies. Can you imagine trying to get some rest? For five months trying to get some rest. Almost dropping from exhaustion. But still, she kept going on. And just think about when she was about to get a moment of rest. She heard some scratching. From the glow of the fire, she could see the beating eyes of the predators staring at her through the dark. She fights off sleep, knowing that, you, that she would dare not drift off, or else they would come. Finally, when you feel that you've scared them off, the rays of the sun come up. And soon, the wings will appear in the sky. She did this act for five months. I want you to get that in, in, in the script for five months. How many things do we do for five months? Hmm. Every day, 24-7. She was there for boys that had died. Until finally King David heard about it. He heard of the devotion of Rizpa and had them taken down and buried between the kings of Kish. All because of the devotion of a mother Rizma. Rizma was certainly a devoted mother. That's the story. Here's the question I raise to you, amen, in the fleeting parts of this message. Is this what we're talking about when we talk about motherhood? Is that the kind of devotion we're exalting today? Think about it. Imagine real mothers looking upon their, their child, amen, for the first time and having the joy in their hearts as they gaze upon their 
children and experience all of the verses. Do you recall hearing the, the giggling of a child for the first time? Hearing them say, Mama, Dada. Seeing them take that first step. To see the child when he's doing something wrong. <laughs> and he finds out that sound carries. I can recall that. Amen. Uh, George was doing something, and when he was just, just a little thing, and he didn't know that noise carried. And so, uh, when, I, when he saw me, he was shocked like, huh? How did he know? That was precious in my eyes. Mothers get up <laughs> in the wee small hours. They guard us from a fevered night. They care for us and clothe us and have watched over us for many years. Seeing them off, seeing the children off to preschool, to daycare, to kindergarten, to grade school, all of these firsts. High school graduation. Proud mamas. Amen. But I want you to know that though you are proud and excited about your, your children, the devil doesn't like that. The devil is out to get them. Our children have a target on their backs. The thief cometh but what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to take our children out. And I'm not just talking about children that are, amen, uh, school age. I'm talking about our uh, adult children. He wants to take them out as well. But I refuse to let the devil have my children. Yeah. Watch, well, just lift your hands, give a fist up and say, devil, you can't have my children. You can't have my children. Mm. We see daily gang violence. We see individuals attend, uh, uh, attending a party, uh, a, a, a just a uh, uh, innocent party, but some are struck down by stray bullets meant for someone else. We see a man mass shootings in the schools. We see folk going a man to uh, the movies as they did in, in Colorado, going to the movies and, and many losing their lives while they were just going to get a man some entertainment. Mm -hmm. Those that are, are struck down by drunk drivers, those that are, are overdosing by, by different drugs. And we saw this last week, eight who died at a Texas, amen, mall. Hallelujah, you got to get through me to get to them. That's got to be the attitude that you as a mother must have. You got to get through me to get to my children. Amen. We must pray for them. Even when you're not appreciated, you've got to keep them before the Lord, even when they don't know it. You've got to go down on your knees and cry out to God and say, save my son. Save of his own. A mother is tenacious 
Amen. This woman, amen, Rizpa was tenacious. She did not stop doing what she was doing. There was a pride in her from within. And amen, there was a determination that she had. There was a steadfastness that she had. There was a resolve never to give up. This woman was standing by herself. She didn't have a group of supporters there, amen, and someone, amen, to tag team with her and to say, wow, you get some sleep. I'm going to, amen, stand guard. She had nobody, but the determination that she had within was this is my son, and I'm not going to let the enemy come in and deprive son. This is the attitude that we must have today. Devil to get to my son, to get to my daughter. You got to get to me. I mean, I gotta be speculating. Hey, day and night. Hey, man, she stood guard. Day and night.
Your faith lived out causes, amen, one to conquer the world. Your faith lived out becomes the salvation of your son or your daughter. Your faith passed on to the next generation becomes hope for the future. These are things we must be teaching our children. Notice directing them not only by your words. There's power in your words. But by example. Words have no power without action. Oh, somebody needs to write that down. Words without power have, without action rather, have no power. I challenge you to go a step beyond Rizpah's devotion. Don't just stand by in times of crisis, but teach them by showing them in the good times. We've got to remember, amen, we ought to make sure that, that our sons and our daughters see more good be bestowed than the evil. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you remember your children, I, again, these first, you remember them. Uh, I, I can recall, amen, yesterday we were, amen, celebrating with, with T and, and with Edward and their little ones. First birthday. Seemed like it was probably the first time that she had had cake with all that ice. And she just, <laughs> amen. Her fingers stayed in her mouth like, oh, there's some remnants here. <laughs> this is some good cake. <laughs> and I take, I, I take her, her hand off over to you in the back. There's still some in the crevices. <laughs> the devil wants us to remember, remember the bad. Mm -hmm. But brothers and sisters, you remember the good. Actions speak louder than words. In conclusion, someone has said, a godly mother will point her children to God by the force of her example. We're grateful to have some devoted mothers here this afternoon and are watching us today. And we're so grateful for what you have done for your children, whether they are your children by birth, your children by marriage, your children, amen, by foster care, Amen. However you are, a godmother, however it is that, that you are pouring into the lives of children, we salute you today. Give the Lord a hand praise for all of your power and mothers.
but this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. If you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, this is a good day for you. For God wants you to rejoice in this day. Why? Because you're giving your life to Jesus Christ. Right where you are is now an altar. You have not come to know Jesus in the pardon of your sins. It's as simple as saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I am a sinner. Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, make me whole. I thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary for me. I believe if you pray that simple prayer that, that you are on the road to heaven. Yes, God has more for you. God wants you to seek him out. God wants you to be buried in the name of the Lord Jesus, that in baptism. He wants to overflow you with the Holy Ghost. Yes, it is for you today. Why don't us in this building give the Lord an offering of praise that goes for those who give their life to Jesus Christ today. God bless you. Is there any or what in our assembly today we need prayer? Well, today we're taking the opportunity to pray for every mother all over amen the world that God will bless each of you. We pray for Mother Tucker today. We pray for Sister Deborah Weekly. For Brother Jerry Smith. We pray for Deacon Ed Thomas. We pray for Dr. Carlos Weekly. We pray for Brother Gary Sales. We pray for Deacon Clifton Welch. We pray for Sister Mary Jenkins. We pray for Brother Charles Cobbs. We pray for Sister Sylvia Carter. We pray today, and this is a way that you can be risen. You can stand in the gap for each of these today. Let's pray. Father, in your name, we appreciate you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you for all of the mothers, Lord, and we thank you for each one who stands in the gap of someone who is in trouble, Lord Jesus. Someone who is dead in trespasses and sin. Father, we lift them up today. Each day that we call out, Lord, you know every situation, you know every challenge. Cancer is, amen, below your name. God, you are able to heal for your glory and for your honor. Each of these that are weak in their bodies, we lift them up today, God. God, those that are struggling in financial condition, those that have issues going on in their bodies, issues going on in their mind, we lift them up today. And God, we stand up.
We ask God that he would, he would bless you and will give back to you good measures, press it down, shake it together, and run it over. We thank God for you. Amen. Father, those who have given and those that are about to give, we ask your blessings to be upon them. Open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings that they shall not be moved enough to receive. Rebuke the devourer for your, for your sake. Father, we ask that, that the devourer would not destroy the fruits of their vine, that their fields would not wither before they bring forth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, Bible study is on Tuesday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. Amen. And you can see that either on Zoom or on uh, Facebook Live. Or if you're not able to see it that day, you can just go on, on our Facebook and it's there. You can see it anytime during the week. God bless you for that. Amen. Is that Sister Tara? Neither will you be able to, to taste the, 
the, the, the lovely uh, cakes, the individual cakes that we have as well. All right. I know you watch and praise Jesus. Amen. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead into this mess while uh, we give those different things out. Yes, sir. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 